I believe with all of my heart to my core that <laughs> naked neck chickens are the cutest chickens on planet Earth if they are actually from planet Earth. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Chickenlandia. I am a backyard chicken educator here in the Pacific Northwest, but you can call me the president of Chickenlandia. So I said to myself, I'm not getting baby chicks this year. This is not the year for baby chicks in Chickenlandia. I'm not gonna do it. And then this happened. Okay, I'm here. I always feel like I'm doing a drug deal when I get baby chicks. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the money, give me the box. Nobody has to know about this. <laughs> So these new babies are in the garage right now and I'm gonna go show you them and their whole setup here in a few minutes. Some of you might be asking, hey, what's the deal? Like you always get rescue chickens. Why are you getting baby chicks? And you know, what can I say? My friend Julie, we were messaging Saturday morning and she was like, I got baby chicks and some of them have naked necks. <laughs> and I was like, what? Cause she knows that those are my favorite. You know, I succumb to the sensation of naked necks. <laughs> In my defense, I did lose a few chickens this year. I mean, a lot of my chickens are old and special needs. Maybe they're just not supposed to be here for that much longer, but I want them to be loved while they are here. So one of the chickens I lost, oh my gosh, you're getting dirt in my boot. Stop it. <laughs> One of the chickens I lost this year was a chicken called Lacey. She was a rescue. She was really, really sweet. Um, she was a naked neck. She was a cross between a turkin and a silky, but she didn't come out with silky feathers. If she had come out that way, she would look more like my rooster, Ebear. Ebear is a showgirl chicken, or a, he's still called a showgirl, even though he's a boy, a showman. <laughs> Anyway, she came out smooth feathered. So I like to say that, you know, she didn't quite make it in Vegas. She's not a showgirl, but that's okay. <laughs> so I guess my heart's been hurting a little bit since I lost Lacey. And what can I say? The devil made me do it. Or maybe Philippe made me do it because he's a demon. <laughs> anyway, let's go see these babies. I am gonna hide the inside of my garage as much as I can because it's a total mess. It has been in disarray since we moved here. And I just like, when, what, you know, when does it stop? <laughs> when does life give you enough time to catch up on all this stuff? It doesn't for me. I'm chronically behind on all things that I'm supposed to be responsible for. Okay, I am inside now with the babies. They're feeling a little bit shy. And you'll see, you know, this is their brooder. I have it kind of at an angle right now. And that's so that they can get warm on this side. And then if they wanna cool off, they can go to the other side. When they're really little, it's good to kind of give them options. And I have puppy pads here. Usually I use paper towels or I use like a real, an old thin cotton towel that it doesn't have any heavy detergents or any strings hanging off of it. And that's what I use when they first come home instead of like shavings, because it's just easier for them to find their feed and their grit, something white where they can really see the food. And it's really important for them to eat right when they come home. And then of course I have their feeder and this is their water. It's kind of dirty right now, but I'll get to that. I'll clean that up. And you can see it has marbles in it, and that's to keep them from immersing themselves because sometimes they'll do that. They just they just don't have that much sense at this age. What I have them in right now is a large guinea pig cage. This is my favorite thing to brood baby chicks in. It's just it's just so convenient because it's already a cage. They can't fly out of it, and it's pretty big, so they will be able to stay in this with enrichment, with things to do so they don't get bored and they, go, they don't start getting into trouble um, until they're ready to go outside. <coughs> so I have some hard boiled egg yolk that I'm gonna put for them and maybe they'll come out. They all ran back in as soon as I, as soon as I sat down. I'm really working on taming them. So I'm gonna pick them up. Come on babies. So this little baby 
she was not doing very well when I first brought them home. And I didn't actually didn't film them for the first few days that they were, I didn't, I didn't. I actually didn't film them for the first few days that they were here because she was struggling. And honestly, when I have an animal that is struggling, I do not put the camera in their face because these are real sentient beings to me and I want to respect their experience. And so I wouldn't want to have a camera in my face if I didn't feel good or if I was struggling. So I did what's called the sick chick protocol on her. And that's just a slurry that I make up and I hand feed them with it to kind of get them past those, you know, times when they're struggling and they're baby chicks. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay, I'll put you down. And it really helped her out. She bounced out of it and she's doing really well right now. She's thriving. So I'm super happy. They're all doing super duper well. This one right here is my son's favorite, my eight year old's favorite. Uh, her name is gonna be Bagel. So far that's the only one that's named, but look at how cute that is. Is she from this planet? I don't know. <laughs> So something that you guys might be wondering is, you know, hey, there's bird flu going around. What are you doing getting baby chicks? And some of you have asked me, you know, should I get baby chicks right now? You know, it depends on the level of risk you're willing to absorb because it's always risk versus risk. You know, I got these baby chicks from an area where there haven't been any outbreaks and they're tested and everything and everything is fine right now from the place where I got these baby chicks. So I felt confident that I was making the right choice, but the best we can do is get as much information as we can and make an informed decision with that information, okay? I love raising baby chicks in a way that is natural and as close to being raised by a mother hen as possible. So if you wanna learn more about how you can raise baby chicks the chicken landia way, I want you to click right here. It's 100% friendly, backyard chickens, education, and entertainment, and I know you're gonna love it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay.